So join me in welcoming Brad Rovenpera. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> I know you came for the chicken. I hope it tastes good. I'm hoping to get a bite of it before I leave here today. Uh, it's really nice to be back, and it does feel like a dream to be here, you know. I did so many things in this very room over the years, and yet I've never spoken to the Action for Beauty Council, so this is a new first for me. Uh, I want to take a, a moment to acknowledge some of the people here who helped make this possible. First, I'd like to thank Sue Rainey for extending the invitation to me back in January. Uh, I couldn't help but remember, you know, we, she and I go way, way back, and uh, there was one time uh -huh. so, sorry, it's on camera now. It's, she was mayor, one of her students is mayor, and, and, and I was her PIO, and she was doing a presentation like this to one of the service clubs at lunch, and I had it all set up just like this, you know, laptop and a projector, and when the lights went down, the projector went on, the image went up. It was up on the ceiling. And we're all looking up at this image of open and we couldn't figure out what was going on, how this happened. So I couldn't hold the projector like this during the whole project, you know, <laughs> get on the screen. So we passed around pictures of the pictures. <laughs> and everybody was just looking at them as she was talking. It worked out, but I mean, sorry about that, Sue. <laughs> I didn't mean to apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Along those lines, I, I owe a great debt of gratitude to my friend Andy Smith. He's one of the senior planners at the city, and he shares my passion for the history of Walnut Creek. And uh, I asked him to help assemble this entertaining and educational program for you uh, on PowerPoint. I also want to thank Terry Camp for his enthusiastic support. Terry and I go way, 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 way back. <laughs> How about that? I mean, when I started as a reporter in 1976 at the Lafayette Sun, he was on the planning commission in Lafayette. All right? Yeah. So I think he got older than I did during the <laughs> <laughs> In any event, and I want to thank the Action for Beauty Council Committee for having me here today. And I want to thank all of you for coming. It's kind of special. So, But right now, let's get on with the show, shall we? When Sue first asked me to do this presentation, her idea was that I talk about the great old buildings of Walnut Creek, and that led me to do some serious reflection. After all, uh, what exactly constitutes a great old building here in this community? Of course, it's over the last four years, I've led tours at one of the greatest and oldest buildings in America, Monticello. Its, uh, it's greatness and longevity is unquestioned. And designed and built by Thomas Jefferson, it's one of our country's most revered founders and innovative early architects. But Monticello is great not only because of who built it and lived in it, but because of its classic architecture. After all, they don't put just any historic building on US currency. It's on your nickel, by the way. <laughs> but in Walnut Creek, what constitutes a great historic building requires some critical thought. For one thing, how old must a structure be here to even qualify as being old? I mean, I just turned 60 this year. <laughs> and I figure I'm older than the majority of the buildings in Walnut Creek. Since 1950, progress has been the primary enemy of heritage sites throughout the town, as in other towns and cities across America. They were either in the wrong place, or they were so poorly built that they could not be retrofitted to meet modern needs, or they were destroyed by fire. So, what does constitute a great old historic building here? Surely it's architecture, but how it was used and who lived or worked there must also be factored in. Perhaps the mere fact that a building constructed over 100 years ago is still standing merits it as a great old building. However, we've lost so many great old buildings over time. The Rogers Hotel, the Antonio Botello Home, St. Mary's Catholic Church, the first one, the Oak Saloon in the San Ramon Valley Bank, the first Walnut Creek Library, Lomel's Creamery, La Virage, even the El Rey Theater. I know you're all nodding. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's here for the El Rey Theater. Show. <laughs> so the list goes on and on. But in the interest of providing you an entertaining and educational talk, I've decided to present to you my top 10 list 
of the greatest historic buildings of Walnut Creek. And like all top 10 lists, this will likely spur animated discussion, perhaps criticism, maybe even a fist fight or two, <laughs> as it is entirely subjective. But after 30 years of research and appreciation of the historic buildings here in Walnut Creek, I have come to regard the following silent sentinels as the top 10. So here goes. Number 10, La Fogata. What is easily the oldest commercial building in Walnut Creek is at the bottom of my list because it needs to be on this list, if only for its remarkable longevity in the heart of this bustling metropolis. It was built in 1862, and it's prominently featured in what's believed to be the oldest existing photograph of Walnut Creek, taken around 1872. It's that building right there. It's that sewing machine. The survivor of a fire in 1879, this building was acquired in 1934 by a grocer named Chet Arthur, who gave it a makeover and permitted a landmark map of the Bay Area to be painted on its south wall. How many of you remember the, the map? Anybody? Sure. <laughs> this aging edifice had a wonderful facelift in the 1980s and today houses one of Walnut Creek's most enduring restaurants. But because it neither resembles nor reminds one of its original appearance, it is easily overlooked by visitors as the great old building that it is. In 1992, I had the great opportunity to meet Chet Arthur. He was 86 at the time, living in Rossmore. And he wisely remarked to me that you can't stop change. And indeed, you cannot. So let's keep moving. Number nine, the Borges Ranch House. Another survivor of the city's earliest years, this venerable old Burgess Ranch house in the city's Shell Ridge open space, makes the list because of its age and its relatively unchanged appearance in over a century. When Portuguese rancher Francisco Borges remodeled and expanded a small redwood cabin in the Ignacio, Ignacio Valley in 1901, he created what would one day become the headquarters of the city's open space program. Frank and his sons built a cow barn and a horse barn over the next four years, and all these structures stand today at the ranch. In 1981, the Borges Ranch became the first landmark in Walnut Creek to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and it was restored by the city in 1990. In a tie, I give the number nine spot also to the venerable Schroeder's Insurance Building. <laughs> this is an unmistakable symbol of its era. It was Walnut Creek's third post office when it opened for business in 1928. It was built by Fred Lawrence and Al Stefan, and this distinctive brick edifice would be the city's post office for nearly the next 20 years. Virtually unchanged in its 86 years, the building was a PG&E office during the 1950s and has housed the venerable Schroeder's insurance since 1983. <laughs> Number eight, a modern China cafe. Now, here's a structure that harkened back to the 19th century and still looks it. It was built in 1872 by Hewitt Steele, and this two-story wooden building was a residence for its first 80-odd years. Its most prominent owners were Dr. Claude Leach, the town's doctor, and his wife, Eva, the first woman elected to the city council in 1932. Dr. Leach was a towering figure in Walnut Creek's early days, not only delivering most of the town's babies over a 37-year span, but also helping to stem the frightening flu epidemic of 1918. This power couple were very active in the community, and Eva Leach was instrumental in forming the first American Red Cross chapter here in 1898. After years as a professional architect's office, the original building was relocated to its current spot in 1993 and has maintained its original appearance despite a shortened front porch. Number seven. The Main Street Rags and other shops and apartments. What for years has been the largest building in the heart of Main Street, this structure was built in 1913 by local entrepreneur and real estate developer Robert Noble Burgess. He later developed the Lakewood subdivision in the 1930s. This building first housed the first national bank, which later became the Bank of Italy, and finally became the Bank of America in 1931. When that institution moved down the street to its current location in 1947, the original building underwent some cosmetic surgery to update its appearance. Town architect Leonard Ford redesigned the exterior of this neoclassical style structure, removing the imposing pediment and decorative columns. Thanks to current owner Brian Hirahara, 
The former First National Bank building has largely maintained its classic appearance and character and continues to be a prominent reminder of Walnut Creek's early architecture. Number six, Vic Stewart's. What for years has been a successful restaurant along South Broadway was once one of Walnut Creek's most visited buildings. When it was constructed in 1891, the Southern Pacific Railroad Depot became a focal point for businesses as well as new visitors to the growing village. The new train station signaled a rebirth for Walnut Creek's commercial district as business owners had been anticipating the arrival of the Iron Horse for decades. The short street that connected Main Street to the train depot was even renamed Railroad Avenue in honor of the new service. However, increased automobile use and the opening of the Bay Bridge and Caldecott Tunnel in the mid-1930s were the death knell for a train service through Walnut Creek. And the last passenger train pulled into this historic station in 1941. The abandoned depot was purchased in 1972 by local attorney John Harrington and relocated further south to accommodate the extension of South Broadway. It has been a restaurant ever since. That's a great picture, by the way. It's a wonderful picture. I think, didn't John Harrington later become President Reagan's energy secretary? I think that's right. Number five, the former Adib's Persian Rugs building. When this distinctive two-story building was constructed in 1910, it would become the first in Walnut Creek to be hooked up to the new electric lines being fed into town by an enterprising businessman named James Stowe. After all, it was his building. The first store tenant was the E. Ignacen Company, followed by Freitas Hardware, then Burns Home Furnishers. Around 1947, local architect Leonard Ford did another makeover for this building, removing the trademark twin towers and the second story bay windows to give it a more modern, streamlined look. A subsequent facelift in the 1990s preserved the four upper windows while further modernizing the exterior. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this building is still owned by the descendants of James Stowe, which makes it one of the few buildings left in town that has been owned by the same family since the beginning. Number four, Havana. Now, finally, here's a historic building that shows l relatively little change in the last 88 years. The county's newly formed Central Fire District had chosen Walnut Creek as its hub and built a two-story cinder block fire station on Bonanza Street in 1926. Get this, the parcel's cost was only $750. <laughs> and the building it only cost $3,000 to erect. By comparison, the fire station's elegant new American La France pumper cost $7,000. Originally, the fire station had two bays for its engines. It was soon expanded to four bays. The march of time left its footprints on this quaint reminder of a simpler era when the fire station finally closed in 1965 after a larger, more modern facility was built on Civic Drive. Number three, St. Paul's Mission Chapel. Of all the buildings I have ranked, this is the only one that has maintained its original architecture and purpose from day one. Built in 1888, the St. Paul's Mission Chapel is today the last surviving 19th century house of worship in Walnut Creek. It was erected during an ambitious period when several other prominent churches were also built, including the town's first, the Walnut Creek Methodist Church in 1872, followed by the St. Mary's Catholic Church and Walnut Creek Presbyterian Church, both opened in 1874, and then St. Paul's was open for worship on April 12, 1889. Cornelius Waite originally built the Redwood Chapel on Locust Street, which was then known as School Street because the Walnut Creek Central School was only a few blocks down the road. Waite's name can still be found at the bottom of one of the original stained glass windows in the chapel. St. Paul's was relocated in 1950 to its present location on Trinity Avenue as part of the larger St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Number two, Sasa. Am I saying that correctly? It's not Zaza, right? <laughs> Zaza. Perhaps no historic building in downtown Walnut Creek has maintained its original charm as the former Lawrence Meat Market on North Main Street. It was built in 1910 by the same pair who constructed the Schroeder's Insurance Building, Fred Lawrence and Al Stefan. 
the small brick building replaced the original all-wood Walnut Creek meat market that had stood on the same site since the turn of the century. The Lawrence family relocated the slaughtering operation in the rear of the property to a less offensive site off Ignatia Valley Road, near where John Muir Medical Center is today. That, that was done. <laughs> that was done to silence complaints from neighboring Main Street business owners. In any event, the Lawrence family moved the meat market to Alamo in 1986, after which the building became home to a coffee mug shop and a su succession of small cafes. Again, Brian Hirahara's acquisition of the building a few years ago and his subsequent sensitive remodeling to preserve its classic architectural design has made it one of the most prized great historic buildings in Walnut Creek today. So thank you, Brian. And now, everybody, the moment of truth. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Go ahead, Mary Lou. You've been waiting for this moment. Number one, the greatest historic building in Walnut Creek is the Shadelands Ranch Historical Museum. This should come as no surprise to anyone here. This stately colonial revival style house, built in 1903, has it all. It's over a century old. It was built by one of the town's earliest and greatest pioneers, and it has miraculously remained on its original site virtually unchanged over 111 years. No other historic building in Walnut Creek can say as much. It helps that the house was the former residence of Walnut Creek's most enduring founder. Hiram Penniman came from New York. He came from New York, actually, to the Ignatio Valley in 1852. With his brother-in-law, George Potwin, Penniman squatted on 370 acres. Yeah, that's, are people still squatting here? God, I hope not. That hurts. Anyway, they squatted on 370 acres of prime farmland that was owned by one of the earliest landowners in Contra Costa County. Her name was Encarnacion Pacheco. She eventually sold the land to uh, Penniman and Potwin for $5,000 in 1856. As he worked to establish his Shadelands fruit farm, Penniman also took an interest in the small commercial area, then known simply as the Corners. He purchased 25 acres of prime land in the heart of today's downtown and laid out the first map of the town site. Penniman became the first real, real estate agent in the hamlet and he was selling parcels for $50 and $70, $75 a piece. As the road overseer for the area, Penniman also is credited with relocating the dirt path away from Walnut Creek and creating a new alignment that became Main Street. In 1970, the old Penniman House was given to the city, which in turn turned it over to the newly formed Walnut Creek Historical Society, which in turn opened the Shadelands Ranch Historical Museum in 1972. It was the second landmark in Walnut Creek to earn a, a place on the National Register of Historic Places in 1985. It is a building of singular beauty and splendor, in my humble opinion, and its claim as the number one greatest historic building in Walnut Creek is secure, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, there you have it, my top 10 picks. I hope you'll agree that Walnut Creek business owners and the city itself have managed to preserve, if not protect, several classic structures from its earliest days. But in closing, and as, as a native son and a former cheerleader of this community, <laughs> I'd like to make a pitch that all of you in the Walnut Creek Action for Beauty Council redouble your efforts to preserve and protect the architectural heritage of Walnut Creek. In other words, I hope you will use the city's 100th anniversary as a launching pad for a renewed community dialogue on historic preservation. We need buildings like the Penniman House and the old Lawrence Meat Market, if only to remind us where we once were and how far we've come. Without our historic buildings, we lose that important perspective. As Shakespeare said, what's past is prologue. Walnut Creek needs to embrace its past, not camouflage it. Keep our community's heritage, heritage alive for generations to come by saving the greatest old buildings. That's something worth fighting for. And once again, I'd like to thank Andy Smith for putting together such a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Andy. And I thank you all very much.
Enjoy the show.